Hi, I'm Robert O'Brien from O'Brien Guitars. I just got my brand new LMI neck angle jig in the mail, and I'm going to show you how to put it together. Before I do that, let me give you a little history on this jig. Initially, this was two parts, or two separate jigs, based on designs that I had seen in other luthier shops, mainly Kent Everett of Everett Guitars in Atlanta, Georgia. One of the jigs was clamped over the body and used for cutting the mortise in the guitar. The other part of the jig was used for cutting the tenon and was, had a, a shelf in there that would allow you to cut the neck angle needed to get the appropriate neck angle for your instrument. At some point I added a piece of L-shaped aluminum that comes out of the top of the side of the jig that cuts the tenon and that's used for calculating the neck angle. I believe it was Luthier Paul Wilson that came up with that design or that part of the jig design. One day one of my students from Texas, Rolando Padron, was in my shop and he said, hey, you know, I think we can consolidate these two jigs into one. And he is a professional CAD uh, drawer, so he drew up a very nice set of plans and incorporated the mortise part of the jig and the tendon side of the jig into one unit. For many years, LMI sold those plans with a hardware kit. That way you could use the plans and their hardware to build your own jig. Now LMI has decided to make this jig in-house. And that's what I'm going to show you how to put together. So let's go over to the bench and get started. So the first thing you're going to notice is that the jig comes very well packaged in an LMI box. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the peanuts and pull out all of the parts. Now that I've got the jig unpackaged, I'm going to go ahead and put it together. It's very important that you follow the sequence step by step as you're assembling the jig. If not, if you take it out of sequence, perhaps it won't come together correctly in the end. Also, LMI recommends that you use brads and glue to put the jig together. If you don't have access to a brad or a nail gun, perhaps just glue is enough. So I'm going to start with the base assembly, which includes this piece, a left and a right piece, and this center piece here. I'm going to use glue as I work here. And then I take this piece here, place it in. Make sure it seats properly in the grooves. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this other arm over here. Start with glue. Don't get happy with the glue unless you like cleaning out, squeeze out. I'm going to use a nail gun with a two inch nail to hold this together. It's a good idea to keep your fingers out from in front of the nail gun. For good measure, I'll put a few across the bottom here as well. Now that the base is assembled, I'm going to add a 5 16 18 by 4 and a half inch carriage bolt into this hole here in the base. I'm then going to spin the base around and add a 5 16 flat washer and then a 5 16 18 hex nut. Use a wrench to tighten this nut. I tightened the nut on the carriage bolt until the square part went all the way into the round hole. In other words, this flat part here, the round flat part, is snug or flush with this part of the MDF. Now I'm going to take the body clamp plate assembly and install two T-nuts into these holes. Use a hammer to drive it home. Next, attach the brace into the body clamp plate assembly. And I'm going to use a little bit of glue and some brads once again to hold this in place securely. Make sure you do it with this side down. You want the dog-eared sides facing out. First. 
With the brace assembled to the body clamp plate assembly, it's now time to fix some cork to this side of the brace assembly. And what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of glue. You could also probably just use a spray adhesive. I'm then going to just place this onto the cork. After a couple minutes of dry time, then I'll come in with a razor and just slice the excess cork off. So just cut the cork off flush with the edge of the brace assembly. The next step is to take these 7 inch long 5 16 number 18 all threads and thread on two 5 16 number 18 hex lock nuts. Now, threading a lock nut onto a piece of all thread is very difficult. If you chuck it up in a drill and then come in with a wrench, it's much easier to do. And you want to bring those in about two inches from the end. I'm now going to glue this piece of cork to this piece of the body clamp assembly. Now you'll notice there's a routed out portion here. I'm just going to glue the cork over it all and then I'll cut that portion out with my razor knife. I've placed a couple of lines on here so I know how far to take my glue line. Make sure you get your glue all the way out to the edges. That way your cork doesn't want to start to peel off. And yes folks, this is a place where you can use your super high-tech glue spreading device if you desire. Don't get too carried away with your glue because cork is a porous material and you don't want a lot of that stuff seeping through. After a couple of minutes of dry time I'm now just going to use my razor knife to cut this. And I'm going to cut this portion out here too. Next I'm going to place a 5 16th flat washer on the end of the all thread where I put the lock nut and then place it through this hole in the body clamp assembly. On the back I'm going to take one of the threaded knobs and just screw it onto the all thread. Next I'm going to start working on the neck pivot plate assembly. Now mine came pre-assembled with this hinge here. I'm going to start by placing two T-nuts. These are one quarter inch number 20 T-nuts into these two holes here. Now be very careful, there are four T-nuts in your kit. Two of them, the larger ones, go into this part here and this part here that we worked on earlier. The smaller diameter ones, which are the quarter inch number 20s, go into these two holes here. I bet you're wondering how I figured out that the smaller ones go in these holes and the larger ones go in the other holes. There are four holes here in the neck pivot plate assembly and you have four one quarter inch number 20 by three inch carriage bolts. Place them into the four holes like this. Put a one quarter inch flat washer on the back of each side and then a one quarter inch number 20 hex nut. And go ahead and run that nut all the way down the bolt and tighten it so that, that bolt's tight. Go ahead and do that on the other three as well. Now I'm going to tighten these things until the carriage bolt on the other side is flush with the plywood. Make sure that you're placing these things through the plywood on the side where you installed the T-nuts. Once you have the four carriage bolts installed with the flat washers and the nuts, this is what it should look like. The next step is to mount the neck pivot plate assembly to this piece here. Now this is so important that LMI has drawn some lines on here with some holes where these screw holes here should align. You want this to be square 
to this piece here. So what I've done is just hung it off the edge of my bench. I'm going to come in here and align this where it needs to be and then clamp that piece to this piece. So align it with the holes that LMI has conveniently drawn on here for us. Make sure that the screw holes in the metal piece align with the circles or the lines that LMI has drawn on this base piece here. That way you know that this will be square. I'm going to start by pre-drilling the two outer holes with a 3 32nd drill bit. And be careful to get it in the center and you also don't want to come out the other side. Now I'm going to take two of these small black screws and place them into these holes here. I'm going to make them snug but not quite all the way. That way I still have room for minor adjustments if I need it. Once I'm sure that I'm aligned with these holes and the lines that LMI has drawn, I'm going to go ahead and install the remaining screws. Once you have these four screws installed, don't forget to come back and tighten the ones on the end. When you ordered your neck angle jig from LMI, you probably ordered a set of templates to come with it. Now what I like to use on my guitars is a straight tenon for a bolt-on mortise and tenon neck. Now you can also order tenons for a dovetail as well. In the package of templates comes the hardware. In the hardware there are four T-nuts. It's now time to install these T-nuts in the top assembly. Once again they come in the package with your templates. In the top assembly you'll notice that there's some pre-drilled and recessed holes. Just place your T-nut inside there and pound it home with a little persuasion tool here. You'll have four of those to do. So now turn the jig around. On the other side of the top assembly you'll find two more holes for the other two T-nuts. Well, folks, I've noticed my first mistake here. And I'm even following a set of plans with pictures. So, hopefully this video will make it easier for you. What I've done is got this installed backwards. I need to remove these screws, turn this shelf around. And it just slipped through. It was one of those things. I should have noticed it. So I'm going to remove these screws and turn it around to the other side and then just attach it again. So what needs to happen is this needs to go around this way and then line it up with all those holes like so. And once again I'm going to use a clamp, just a spring clamp over here to hold it in place. So let me see if I can explain this to keep you from making the same mistake. This top assembly has a large hole here and you're going to want where it says neck angle jig facing the large hole the hinge will go on the other side of the top assembly where there's a hole like this but it's smaller and it's in the middle so make sure that you have it in that orientation and you'll avoid my mistake alright so this is what it should look like if you do it correctly this small cutout area directly in the middle of the top assembly you want the screws and the hinge on this side and not this side. I had it turned around backwards. So there we go. The important thing though is to make sure that the hinges are aligned with the lines that LMI has drawn on there for you. The next step is to attach the body clamp to the top assembly. This piece here will recess into this dadoed part of the top assembly and I've already discovered that I'm going to have to recess my cork because I didn't leave it recessed back a little bit there so it would go down into that area there. So I'm going to do that and then we'll put this onto the jig. So all I did was just cut off about an eighth of an inch of cork here on the edge. 
But I'm going to apply some glue to this dado dot area. And then this is going to go into here. Make sure that you align this part of the jig with this part of the top assembly. Now this piece, since it already has the T-nuts installed here, is just place it on here and then thread the all thread into the T-nuts. This assembly here then closes on the guitar body, allowing it to be held securely as you cut the mortise in the guitar body. You now have a right and a left side that attaches to the top assembly. It goes in here like so and supports this assembly here. And I'm going to apply some glue and use nails to attach this to the top assembly. Go ahead and do the other side the same way. Make sure that this part of the side support is facing in, and then this part, the clamp top assembly that holds the guitar, has a little tongue on it that will slide into there. The next step is to install the templates on the top of the jig. This is the template for the tenon. It goes in a large opening, also goes on the side that has that shelf underneath there that pivots up and down. Place it over there. Use the screws that come with it and attach it to the T-nuts that you put underneath. You want to make sure that it stays square to the edge of the jig. This one goes on the other side, obviously. Here's a little trick you can do. Wick a little bit of thin viscosity CA glue into that channel right there, and it'll help toughen it up a little bit so your screw won't damage it as much. Now, I've used these templates on hundreds of guitars, and I haven't damaged one yet, but you could. With the templates installed on the top assembly, making sure that you have the right template on the right side, it's now time to install the riser assembly. Now this comes as one piece in the kit. All you need to do is just break it apart like this. Break off the excess here. One side goes on this side, and one side goes on this side. I'm going to use my razor knife to remove any of the little excess burrs here of the MDF to make sure that they're smooth. I'm then going to use a sanding block to make sure that they're smooth because the template needs to slide in there. Don't get carried away. You need for that edge to be flat. That goes on there like that. The same thing on the other side. And then very lightly hit it with your sanding block. Now LMI recommends gluing these shim pieces to the top of your jig assembly. However, before you do that, use a piece of paper as a shim That way you're not too tight or too loose with your templates in reference to your 
shim assembly here. And you can just tape this down with binding tape like you do when you're binding a guitar. So I'm going to start by placing some glue on the shim assembly here. Then I'm going to use my paper shims so that I don't get too tight on those templates there. Like so. I think I'm just going to use my brad nailer with some small nails in it to tack this in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we've come to the point where we need to make a command decision. The top assembly is going to be attached to the base assembly. If you want it to be permanent, just glue it and clamp it. If you want it to be temporary, just use through bolts and nuts to attach the top to the base. However, these are not included with the LMI kit. Now, if you're having trouble making that command decision, call your wife down. I bet she'll make it for you. So once you've made your command decision about being temporary or permanent, it's time to attach the base to the top assembly. The direction or the orientation is important. You want this carriage bolt facing towards the shelf here. In other words, it's going to go with the feet facing that way. And it slides right down into place here. Now I'm going to apply a little glue down in there. I'm also going to come in and tack it on the sides with a brad. And I might even put a about a one inch uh, coarse thread drywall screw in there as well. So I'm going to apply glue down in this area here and along the side. Then, in the orientation that I outlined here with the feet going towards this shelf, come in and place this down inside there. Make sure that it bottoms out completely. If you need to, come in and lightly tap it. Then I'm going to hit the sides here with a couple of brads. And then I'm also going to put a couple of coarse thread one inch drywall screws in there just to make sure it stays put. And I put a couple more on the other side. So I now have the jig laying on its side. What I want to do is pull this shelf that's mounted on the hinge, pull it away from this carriage bolt here so I have access to that carriage bolt. I'm then going to place one 5 16th nut onto that carriage bolt. I'm then going to place a 5 16th flat washer on top of that. Now I'm going to place the shelf back over the carriage bolt and place a 5 16 washer on this side and then a 5 16 nut onto the carriage bolt. And this is what locks in the angle of the neck when you're cutting the tenon. These two pieces are placed here on the jig and are used to hold the neck in place while you're cutting the tenon. Now if you're using a pre-carved neck it's probably a good idea to protect this so you don't damage the neck. You have just enough cork left over to go ahead and line these blocks with cork. So just place a little glue on the piece. Come in and place your cork. And then just cut or break off your excess like so. These pieces then get placed here. Then you place these knobs on the carriage bolts and those help lock it in place. You're going to do the same thing for this second piece which goes here. And of course those get clamped down tight when you're holding your neck in place. To help set the neck angle, the aluminum piece comes through the top of the jig. 
comes down like so. Then on this side of the jig, use these knobs with the studs to secure it to the shelf. The slotted aluminum extrusion height can be preset to the bridge distance to simplify the measuring and setting of the neck angle. Just loosen the knobs and then raise and lower the aluminum piece to get the measurement you want for your guitar. One of the improvements over my original jig is that there's a center line on the LMI jig. The two holes in the plastic piece here with the center line on it will align here in this groove with the two holes pre-drilled. Once they're aligned, place the two inserts in from the back side. Then place the two screws through the holes and into the inserts and tighten them to hold the center line in place. There are three pre-drilled holes on the shelf side or on the neck side and they'll send you a couple of plastic dowels. Insert those into a couple of the holes and that will help you align your neck when you're placing your neck into the jig. Just use your truss rod slot. Most truss rods are about a quarter inch. They are removable, so if you cut your truss rod slot after the fact, just pull those out. They are a very snug fit, so go ahead and tap them into place if you need to. So this is what the assembled jig looks like. You'll notice that there are a couple of slots on either side of the jig. This is for bolting it to your bench. They are spaced 15 and 3 quarter inches apart and are centered 2 inches from the base front to back. So that's how you put the LMI neck angle jig together. I only made a couple of mistakes along the way, but hopefully these video instructions will keep you from making those same mistakes. Let's go make some sawdust.